Okay, Digital Warfires, welcome back. This is the third episode of our uh, Steel Beast tutorial missions for the M1. And this is Gunnery uh, Mission C. Uh, so we're going to earn learn. In Mission B, we earned, you know, how to laze. Now we're going to kind of go over some more advanced concepts of lazing, such as uh, multiple returns, how to use the rain switch uh, for first or last uh, returns. Um, and this is going to better your game. So let's go ahead and jump in the tank. Let's get in here and do some damage. And what I like about these tutorials with Steel Beast is uh, if you go through them in order, each one builds on the last one. Um, so again, this is the art of lasing. As stated in the previous tutorial, the laser rangefinder, the LRF, works by sending out a pulse of laser light and using the return times of the reflections to calculate the range. Note that there may be more than one return time to measure because of multiple reflections. Although the pulse of a laser light is a focused beam, this beam does widen over distance. At a range of two or three kilometers, the beam will spread out so much that a tank might not block the entire beam. In this case, some laser light might be reflected off the ground while in front of the target, and some may be reflected off the ground or trees well behind the target. When the LRF receives multiple returns, a bar appears over the range display numbers in the GPS. The gunner must then decide whether the display is the, the gunner must decide whether the displayed range is valid. The displayed range will be based on either a first return or last return, depending on the setting of the range switch at the time of the target was lased. So how should the gunner set the range switch? If the target is big enough to block the entire laser beam, the range switch should be set to last return. The width of the laser beam will be about as half a wide as the circle in the GPS reticle. So use that as a guide to determining if the beam should be entirely blocked by the target. Be careful with targets that have spaces in them, like uh, wheeled vehicles, since the beam may pass through these spaces on the vehicle. First return should be used when there are no obstacles between your tank and the target, especially for des distant targets that cannot block the entire beam. The gunner should also choose where he lasers the target based on the range switch setting. If last return is selected, he might want to laze a little low so the beam does not spill over the top of the target and reflect off the distant landscape. If first return is used, the gunner might want to laze a little high so the beam does not reflect off the ground in front of the target. In both cases, the gunner should aim at the center of the target when actually firing the gun. So what that means is, you know, depending on which return setting you're going to use, after you get your lays, you want to settle those crosshairs back down center mass on the vehicle that you're shooting at. In this mission, practice lasing the targets using both last return and first return. Press the tilde key to toggle between first return and last return, or click on the LRF display box at the left of the screen, or use the menus. Notice when the multiple return bar appears over the range display. Try lasing when the target fills only the upper or lower part of the reticle circle, and then toggle the range switch and, and laze again. Be careful not to burn out the laser. Alright, so we're getting back on the range. Let's jump on the gun, get in the scope, and let's take a look. Alright, so let's, uh, let's go and take a look at this guy here. Alright, so when we hit the tilt key, you'll notice, let's settle the target right there. Down here in the bottom left, it says LRF, arm first return, arm last return. So we can change these how we see fit. So we want to go to first return if the target can completely fill the reticle on your gun sight. So this would be a good case for first return. Plus, just like the mission briefing said, you should also try to use first return when there's nothing, you know, no obstacles between you and the target. So there's no trees, you know, no bushes or anything like that between us and the target. So let's go ahead and laze him. He's at a distance of 1290. Let's shoot the gun. Kaboom, he's dead. Remember to dump our lead. And let's take a look at somebody else. All right. Let's look at this guy here. And let's laze right about there. So we're going to laze. That's giving us 1812. Let's switch it to oop, switch the last return. And now it gives us 1910. 
Now you can see we're getting multiple laser returns because there's this green bar over the range symbol versus if we had just laser, say this guy, you see there's no green bar there at the top knowing. So you know that this is a solid laser to this target because it only one return came back. So let's go ahead and laser this guy again, what we're in. Let's go with uh, last return. And kind of a little mnemonic device that I used uh, to kind of keep track uh, of how I should laser and which return and where I should aim is last return lays low first return lays high okay so let's go ahead and use last return we're gonna aim low here right about there right there and like it said before we want to settle the target back down center mass and then we want to fire the gun that should be a solid hit now obviously the Sable round did deviate a little to the left, but, you know, that's just flight characteristics of the weapon. Let's go ahead and shoot another one just to make sure that this tank is dead. All right, he should be toast. So, we're going to switch back to first return. Why? Because this tank is, A, relatively close, B, it fills the entire reticle circle, and C, because there's nothing really between us and the target. Go ahead and shoot him right there. Dump that lead. We can also use first return on this guy because he does fill the entire reticle. So he meets that parameter for uh, first return. Oh, did we, oh, we didn't laser him. So that's why that round went into the dirt. We're still aiming at the last target, which was 640. So let's aim 1,600 meters. Solid hit. Dump the lead. Lays, 930. Pop him, dump the lead. Lays, 1210. Let's go ahead and use last return here. Lays him. Still 1210. And the reason why is because the target fills the entire box. So whether or not I use first or last return, it's going to give me a solid range calculation because there's no multiple returns. So the computer doesn't have to try to decipher which return is really the target. However, if, let's see if we can aim a little high here on him. Let's see if we can get a multiple return. So we got a multiple return on that. It's still at 1210, but some of the laser spilled over the vehicle and reflected off the background and came back. But the majority of it probably got a good laser and a return. So that's why it still says 1210. Bring the reticle back down. Fire. And he should be toast. Dump the lead. I think that was everybody. Did we kill everybody? We'll make sure here. We'll kill. Put a couple more rounds into people here. Just to make sure so the mission ends. Put another one into this guy. Last return. Mission over. There we go. Alright, so that was just some little bit more advanced techniques uh, to help you guys with lasing your targets. Again, once you're in game and start shooting at live targets that are actually shooting back, it does get kind of hairy. You can easily forget about, you know, which return setting you should use for your for for lasing. So just try to always keep that stuff in mind. Um, and with that being said, guys, I hope you're enjoying the series so far. 